I'm here with Clear Heart from the Tier Fund, and this is their time we sat down and had a conversation about the report. Um, so it was released last week, yeah. and the response has been overall quite positive. Yeah, I think we've seen um, a bit of a shift in people understanding that the ethical fashion report is a necessary thing. Um, there is still, I think, there's still robust discussion about how we do our assessment, and especially in relation to non-responsive companies, and what, how do we actually approach that situation, and whether we assess on transparency and how that works. So there's definitely that still happening, but I think overall we're seeing people understand, yeah, this is something that we need, um, and it's a helpful tool for consumers. Yeah, because um, Trulis Cooper got an F again this year. She did. Yes. So. Understanding that, it, it, that the the rating comes from the information, if they don't um, actively participate yeah. in the reporting, then the data comes from what's in the public space. So yeah. that indicates that she's not putting out inf any information about her supply chains, yeah. about their operations. Yeah, yeah. So transparency is the new accepted norm in the industry. Yeah. Um, some level of transparency. And so that's why we don't want to force companies to participate in our research. So if they don't, we go ahead and look at what's available in the public domain. And for many companies, you can get a totally acceptable grade through that process. So you look at companies like Barker's and Max and Karen Walker, they all get sort of that B, C grade range from their transparency reports or social responsibility pages on their website. Um, which is fine, you know, that, it's great to see those companies making those disclosures because in a way it's actually harder to make a public disclosure than a private disclosure to yeah. us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some companies aren't, and those companies that have low transparency are the ones that get those low grades. Um, but it is interesting and important to note, if you did hop on Trilise Cooper's website today, you would see a whole bunch of information on there because we complete our assessments in January because we then have to go and process the data of 130 companies and write a big report. Um, and since January, that company has made a few public disclosures. Um, there's even a partial suppliers list up there now. Oh, so that's great. really great to see that progress and transparency. So there's been a behaviour change around it. Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, I'd like to assume there's been an acknowledgement that it is something that customers are wanting to see. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that the uh, supply chains aren't meeting standards or so are ethical. It's just they're not um, they're not communicating it, and we accept yeah. that now. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, now the talking to a number of different fashion brands, and now seeing the mindful fashion yeah. um, come out, um, led by Kate and Wester, yeah. and you see that Koto's in it, and Ruby, and mm. you know a number of different brands. One of the things we hear often is that these small designer labels in New Zealand don't fit mm. that big auditing process that you have for international brands with mass production in Asia. So there kind of seems to be like an audit mismatch, but, and they'll often purchase their fabrics from suppliers over which they have no oversight. Yeah. So how, how do really small New Zealand brands fit? Within, within the TF fund reporting? Yeah, it's a great question. And so we think it's really important for us to still assess some of the household names in New Zealand. But you're right, they do face a unique set of challenges that some of those larger companies that do their manufacturing offshore don't face. And so it's awesome to see companies like Kate Sylvester and Ruby come up with their own solutions to the problems that they're facing. So mindful fashion, from what I understand, is going to create or agree upon an ethical standard of manufacturing in New Zealand that they're all happy with. And then they're going to figure out a way to make sure that that's upheld. And that's exactly the sort of thing that we want to see happening in the industry. We want to see companies taking note of what their suppliers are doing and caring that their suppliers have the appropriate standards. And then after that, I think they're going to tackle the challenging problem of tracing their supply chains because, as you say, they get lots of their fabric through importers or third parties and beyond those third parties they've got no visibility. And for us that's a really important question to be answered because it's often further down the supply chain, further away from the companies that there's a higher risk of exploitation. So, and it'll be, 
I'm looking forward to seeing what solutions they come up with in terms of how they can trace past those fabric agents and past those importers because that will be a really important step for all of those companies. Yeah, and it's really great to see them collaborate together, yeah. together you know, and often you know, fashion is a highly competitive market. Yes. I, when I saw them come together, I thought this is really great, a really great movement yeah. forward. Yeah. yeah, it is, it absolutely is, and collaboration is the only way that they'll see change because, you know, Separately, they've got a tiny amount of buying power. Together, they'll have a lot more and there'll be a lot more scope for change. So we're really supportive of Michael Fashion and we will work with them as in how much they want us to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, of the, um, one of the brands that um, got a good rating, which um, I struggle with a little bit, is the warehouse group getting a B-. Mm. And this is where the debate comes in around... Um, environmental yeah. benchmarks versus sustainability. Yeah. So, um, and we know with the warehouse have re recently come under pressure, not from a fashion perspective, but from the selling of tents for festivals. They so used one time and then dumped. And, and the difference between environmentalism and sustainable, sustainability is yeah. how much of a resource you use and how quickly it's discarded, yeah. and um, so brands, while they may, you know, offset a lot of their environmental yeah. impacts, and that's one step forward. But if they're just churning through masses amounts of resources, and then they're getting dumped, this is where I have a problem with that kind of being minus mm. reporting. Mm. Yeah, 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 such a valid question, and we get asked that very regularly. You know, like, how can a fast fashion brand be, like, a Zara, I think, get an A, that sort of question. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, historically, the survey that we use has been purely focused on labour rights management systems. So what does companies, what do companies have in place to look after workers in their supply chain? But more recently, it's become obvious that a truly ethical company is actually taking into account their environmental impact, so we're starting to ask companies to report on environmental metrics. And so the big picture is that ultimately we want to be able to capture a really robust information about how sustainable a company is. But we're going to go on that journey at a slower pace, basically. We work closely in relationship with lots of companies and we want to make sure that we introduce a very different part of the survey in a way that's manageable for companies yeah. um, and in a way that's not, I guess, ultimately too demoralising, really. So, yeah, we're looking, we'll be developing that environmental section of the survey and I look forward to seeing when we can start to shape those questions to capture more of that overall, yeah, resource use sustainability piece. So watch this space because you will see that develop. Oh, that's great. And, and I understand, you know, you don't want to alienate companies, yeah. you want to keep them in the process so you can affect behaviour change. That's right, because that's yeah. what we want to do. We want to change systems, and to do that, positive relationships is one of the most powerful tools that we have to be able to do that. And so we're going to move this research towards sustainability in a way that can maintain those positive relationships. Mm. On a final note, um, I did my master's in ethical purchasing and I thought I would come out of that research and be so, not converted, I was already converted, but yeah. so, um, which believes so strongly in individual responsibility around, around ethical purchasing. But what surprised me is that I actually came out of it and, um, and my thinking changed in that it's an abdication of responsibility by government and mm. that they're not protecting their envir environments or not protecting their um, workers' rights as well as they could. Yeah. And perhaps this individualisation of responsibility was um, unfair. Mm. And more needed to be done around ensuring this really strong policy yeah. for poor people and for our environment. Mm. And what I'd really like to see from from the tier fund is potentially how you can move into that space mm. around lobbying governments for for stronger policy and for greater protections. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think you're totally right. Um, with this no silver bullet, we're not going to solve all of the problems. By consumers having raised awareness, you know, that it has to be, a, I guess, a holistic approach and government regulation is part of that. And I think we're seeing that shift um, with the Modern Slavery Acts that have come in in the UK and in Australia this year. And it's definitely a conversation that Tier Fund has been a part of in New Zealand. Do we want a Modern Slavery Act? What would that look like? And we plan to keep pushing those conversations um, but yeah, you're right. We do need to we need to tackle the issue from all different sides, really, if we want to see change. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Claire. Fascinating as always. Yep. And um, I look forward to the next report. <laughs> Watch the space. <laughs>